Do you need to run scalable batch jobs without the overhead of managing everything that comes with it? Are you concerned about optimizing resources to match your batch job's needs or flexibility when it comes to cost and resource availability? Come along as I introduce you to the latest Google Cloud product for batch job scheduling, Batch. Parallel computing tasks like rendering, transcoding, scientific workflows, and risk modeling are laborious, time-consuming, and often there's little flexibility when you're running these tasks. Batch jobs can require a complicated setup like hosting of job schedulers, managing the servers, building custom autoscalers, and often you bear the burden of managing both the queue of jobs and the lifecycle of the infrastructure. This management can lead to an exponential amount of unnecessary overhead that dedicated resources would be needed to look after. Google has a history of developing products that serve these computing needs and deal with some complexities that come with them. And now we're excited to introduce one more that hits a few sweet spots that you have asked for. Google Cloud proudly presents Batch a fully managed job scheduler to help you run thousands of batch jobs with a single command. It's simple to use, handles resources in a more optimized way, and makes running batch jobs of any scale, executable type, and job structure easy. Batch is built to run workloads of any size, but it really shines with large scale workloads. For long running jobs, Batch won't time out after a certain number of hours and it'll run however long is needed to complete the job. You can specify a max run duration at the individual task level within the job to prevent hanging or runaway tasks. One thing to note is if the run value is exceeded, the task will be marked as failed, but the task may be retried if you specify a retry value. Batch gives customers the ability to run both containers and shell scripts as jobs, compared to some other batch products available today, which only allow for containerized jobs. This means that if you have batch scripts that are used on-prem, which a large amount of high-performance computing workloads are, and need to run a job on the cloud, you don't have to first containerize it. You can just configure the script with batch and run the job. When we say fully managed, we mean it. You focus on the jobs to run while Batch takes care of the infrastructure on the back end and optimizes VM life cycles to run efficiently. And it's built on the cloud, so it takes advantage of the cloud capacity and is elastic and flexible so that when you need more capacity, Batch starts more VMs if they're available, and when you need less, it runs less. Plus, Compute Engine has a flexible pricing model that goes along with this, so you can leverage spot VMs and custom machine types to stay within your budget. To top it all off, it's a cloud-native stack, so it can easily be used with other Google Cloud services, like cloud storage, file store, logging, monitoring, workflows, and cloud scheduler. And Batch continues to expand upon the workflow engines and tools that are supported. As I mentioned before, Batch works by managing everything on the back end. It allocates machines, resources like CPUs, memory, and GPUs to set the right configuration for Batch workloads, like the spot VMs I mentioned. It'll set up compute instances for you, schedule and queue up jobs, retry tasks within a job in case of failures, and adhere to the priorities you set, all while optimizing for cost and speed. All you need to do is define a job, submit it, and monitor the results. Let's walk through how to do that so you can see just how simple the configuration process is with a video transcoding example. First, we'll need to run this command to enable the Batch API. This is a requirement when you're using Batch for the first time in a project. Then, prepare a cloud storage bucket. You can use a cloud storage bucket to store objects for Batch jobs. Make sure that you're in this transcoding directory. You'll need to run these commands to create a new bucket and copy tutorial files to that bucket. Replace project ID and bucket name in the command to whatever your project name is and what you want the name of your bucket to be. I named mine Nuggets of Buckets. You can see here that the video files have been copied. 
Next, we need to define a job. In Badge, a job is a collection of tasks. For this tutorial, we'll create a job that has a task to encode video files with the VP9 Code C compression format. Go to the editor and under batch samples slash transcoding, you should see the job.json file. Open it in the editor, change the bucket name to the name of your bucket, and then save the file. The JSON file defines a job that runs the transcode.sh script in spot N2D standard for instances. It also defines how many resources the task can use, such as CPU, memory, and time. Once we have the file saved, we need to submit the job to batch before we can run it. This command will submit a job named transcode using the job.json file we saved in the US Central 1 region. When you're running your own job, you can replace transcode with the name of your job and select the appropriate region for your business. The output should look like this. And the first line should say, job was successfully submitted. So now the job is registered in the system. You can always check the current status of a job by running this batch jobs describe command. And the output should look like this. If the state is scheduled, like we can see here, that means the job is scheduled to run and batch is preparing resources such as spinning up a VM. The status will change to running once batch has finished preparing the VMs and starts running the tasks defined in the job. If you want to see the compute engine instances that batch has created to run the job, you can run the command gcloud compute instances list and the output should look like this. The machine name will change every time. For this tutorial, we're running a fairly small job that should finish in about five minutes. The time it takes depends on the complexity of the job. Batch supports running jobs for hours and even days when needed. You can see the progress of your job by looking at the log in cloud logging. There are console outputs from the tasks and compute engine operation history managed by batch. You can also check if the job has finished with the same gcloud command we used before. The status should show succeeded when the job has finished successfully. Now you can check out the encoded video files. They'll be stored in the same cloud storage bucket. And there are two ways that you could do this. Either run this command that displays a list of the encoded video files, and then run this command making sure to change the bucket name if you want to download them. Or you can browse the objects in your bucket in the console. You'll find the new files in the output directory inside the current directory, and you can open and watch them with your Chrome browser by clicking the download arrows on the right here. <laughs> Geese! Once you finish with this, you have a few options. Batch automatically deletes the instances it creates for each job, and there is no charge to keep your job in the history after it's completed. However, you might still be charged for storing the data for the job in cloud storage. You may want to keep the job in the history so you can do some chargeback or review periodically like at the end of the month. Or you may want to keep the job around to compare certain jobs to one another. So, Ultimately, it's your choice on what the best move is for you based on your organization's needs. You can delete the batch job by running the gcloud beta batch jobs delete command. And that's all there is to it. Now you've successfully defined and run a job in batch on Google Cloud. Batch is meant to relieve the burden for customers like you managing third party batch schedulers, open source frameworks, and orchestration software. Batch manages the complex, large-scale stuff in the background so you save on resources, time, and cost and can focus on what's really important, your business. If you want to learn more, check out the product page, public docs, and the written tutorial all linked in the description. Thanks for watching.